Welcome to the Fresh Rhyme Podcast, where we share insights and advice to help new nurses thrive in their careers. I'm Brittany Wilson, BSN RN, founder of thenerdynurse.com, and your guest host for today's episode. I'm honored to have the opportunity to interview my dear friend, Katie Kleber, MSN RN, the founder of FreshRN.com, also known as Fresh RN out in the world. Katie and I go way back. We've been supporting each other's journeys in the nursing world for well over a decade now. As someone who's passionate about nursing technology and helping others, I started the nerdynurse.com to empower nurses with the tools they need to be successful. Um, if you know me, that's cool. If you don't, it's also cool because what we're really here to do today is talk about Katie. Um, we have a special treat for you. We're celebrating the 10-year anniversary of FreshRN.com, and I have the privilege of turning the tables here and putting Katie in the hot seat for a change. So get ready, guys. We'll be diving into her journey, her accomplishments, and the future of FreshRN.com. So without further ado, let's welcome Katie to the show. Hey. Yay. <laughs> What's up? Thanks uh, Thanks for uh, having me here today. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> Are you ready for this role reversal? Um, yes, I am. Please interview me, Brittany. <laughs> All right. Great. Let's get started. Okay. So I have a lot of questions. Um, I sent them to you ahead of time so you could take a look. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many we're going get, to get through, so we may hop around a little bit. Um, if, uh, if we feel like we're running uh, short on time. So you just let me know how, how you want these things to go. So the first one is, um, congratulations, first of all, on the oh, 10 year yeah. anniversary of Fresher In. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like mm -hmm. that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> can you share with our listeners the story behind founding Fresher In, how it has evolved over the past decade? Yeah. So one thing that I, it, it, it definitely evolved as, the, as a good word because I never started out like thinking I am going to make a brand and I am going to create a nursing education business. It never started like that. It was this like slow burn over years. So in 2013, when a lot of y'all were probably in like middle school, to be honest, <laughs> I was, I remember I was starting my second nursing job. I had moved across the country, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, started working in neuro ICU, which was a huge learning curve for me. Um, and I was already kind of annoyed that like when I graduated from nursing school, there was a learning curve. Like I knew there would be a learning curve, but I had not. And as you, we've talked about this many times before, never imagined it would be what it was. And every yeah. nurse feels like that. Literally every single one of us which makes me mad. And <laughs> especially after they put you on that pedestal because you got in and then you completed it. And that's supposed to be such a challenge. You're, oh you're yeah. And you get, I, I didn't get a pluses, I, but a lot of those nurses who do overachievers, high grades in nursing school, and then they crash down into like bedside nursing real world. It, and that's actually a lot of the people I talk to on a regular basis are people who were highly successful in nursing school and it's not translated to bedside. Yeah. I digress. So in 2013, I'm like learning how to be a neuro ICU nurse, which was terrifying and amazing all at the same time. I discovered Tumblr. <laughs> Remember Tumblr? Yeah. And Back so before it was basically only fans. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. And I, um, and that like, right. 2013, not a lot of like Instagram was barely around. I think Facebook definitely was, but like, and Twitter was really young in it and there was definitely no TikTok. Um, YouTube was still really young and I discovered gifts and I saw the, there was one nursing Tumblr one. Ooh. And it was, I think it was like, what should we call nursing? I don't know. It was something like that. And they would just mm -hmm. do these funny gifts with a, a line of how related to nursing. And I found this and I was crying, laughing, re like scrolling through it. And I was like, I could do this. Let me figure out how to do this. I have like 50 of these that I could make right now and put them on one. And so I was like, okay, I'll do that. And so I figured that out. I made, uh, made up my name. It was nurse eye roll. Cause all I wanted to do was make jokes. And there's so many jokes in nursing. I mean, it's just like a perfect place to make lots of You jokes. have to laugh or you're going to cry. <laughs> right, right. And there's just so many like awkward, weird things. And so I started doing that. And then I do like writing and I've liked writing for a long time or since I was, you know, young, much younger. So I would write longer posts about like people would ask questions. Oh, you're a nurse. What do, hey, I just started. You got any advice? Right. So I would, 
and and on Tumblr, people would send messages all the, like DM all the time. It was very much like anonymous, like, you know, you would message people and ask questions. So I would write these long posts and they would get, I've got a lot of followers pretty quickly. And I did, I also started Twitter at that same time, both with that nurse eye roll. I just want to make jokes, uh, persona. And then I ran into a friend who saw it and she was very much like, a. it was so anonymous. Right. So, and she knew about it and she saw it. She's like, this is great. I can't believe the traction you're getting. You need to start your own website which had never entered my brain before. So I started a website, nurseiroll.com. And I started, I did some funny and then I did some like very info or informational. And those got very, very popular. I got shared a lot. I ended up getting little deals here and there, like before like brand things like today, right? Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Like the Instagram, like brand deals. It was like this scrub company wants to send you some scrubs and have you write a review, or we want to send you a set of blackout curtains. And I was just yeah. like, oh, yeah. But you, ha- I mean, stop. you felt like you had arrived back then because nobody oh. was doing anything like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had a blog then. There was like Keith's uh, digital doorway. Was that it? <laughs> I mean, there was yeah. like no nursing websites that were run by actual nurses and not big companies. There were a handful in, you know, 2010, 2011 who were doing some stuff, but nobody lasted much longer than a year. I saw a lot of people come and go. Um, I don't know that there's any people beyond maybe Keith and like Donna. You know, Donna, oh, Card- Donna Cardillo, Card- yes. Cardillo, um, Cardillo, Cardillo. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know, it's two L's there. I always Sounds like Armadillo. Maybe. And I met I her like a thousand times and I've seen her speak so much, but I always, oh, I always, get, I always mess it up. Yeah. I love her. Yeah, I too. remember she was there because she was the person I was like, well, if I can do this, then I will have made it. She was the most prolific. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was it. So you're right. You know, anything you got felt like a win at that point because, you know, so, the, we're in uncharted territory. And I had one post that, so I ended up on wordpress.com and I had where you can enable ads. I had, and I did one post. That was like all gifts and like, you know, funny, a day in the life of a nurse. Right. And I, it went viral. Like, and that was right when going viral was actually like first starting like posts going viral and especially in the nursing niche. And I made $1,800 off the ads for one post on wordpress.com. And I was like, John, that's like a paycheck. That was a paycheck. Yeah. It literally was a paycheck. Especially 10 years ago. Yep. I mean, yeah. I was making like 2K. A, a paycheck was $2,000 roughly. Yeah. So it was like, um, I know a little something going on here. And so that was like the beginning of it. And then it kind of, it snowballed over the years. I won't give every little like da- detail, but I, it turned into a blog. And then I took the, I, that's also when Amazon started doing self-publishing. And so I took my most popular blog posts, I think about 10 of them roughly. And then I cr- created an outline for a PDF, a book. I was just going to sell a book. And I was like, let me, I just want to make the money off this to uh, get like, make, make back what I spent on like yeah. editing. Although I didn't spend nearly as much as I should have. Well, <laughs> yeah, those first few drafts were rough. Um, but anyways, I, uh, so I did that. And at that time, there was literally no books, maybe like one or two, and they were very kind of textbooky, like mm-hmm. nursing school ones. There weren't many that gave you practical advice on like how to get through your shift. And so I released that, and it's sold since like eighty thousand copies. Like and that book was called "Becoming Nursey: From Code Blues to Code Browns: How to Care for Your Patients and Yourself." Yeah, it was like a two hundred page book, like. And that, and that guy ha- was given away at, at pinning ceremonies, given away at nursing residencies. Like it was, um, like it was reviewed in the ANCC's like journal. Like I couldn't believe it. Oh, and I guess I should say right around that time is when I went to the National Nurses and Business Association's 2015 meeting. We, I, I don't know if that's the first time you and I met in person. It might have been. No. The where? Uh, NNBA in 2015. Uh, probably. Yeah. Okay. Because but... up to then, I was nurse eye roll. Yes. I was going to talk about that. 
Yes. And then we, and I can't remember when we had this conversation, but it was around that time. I actually know it. I bet it was before. You remember the time that I DM'd you a stranger on the internet and gave unsolicited advice, which is uh, my favorite pastime. Well, so, (laughs) but here's, so I had this name nurse eye roll and I didn't think it was really going to be anything, right? This was going to be a hobby. I didn't think I was going to be talking to universities. And I didn't, (laughs) I didn't think I was going to be talking to like, Dr. Oz, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't think that stuff was going to happen. So I had this snarky name and then it's like, oh wait, businesses and schools and reputable institutions don't really want to publish that they're working with someone nurse with says, and I was also having to explain it to everybody. It was getting old. And you, you messaged me and you're like, well, have you thought about, <laughs> I don't even remember what it said. I wish I would have, that would have been a great thing to screenshot. Of course, that was before screenshotting was enabled probably, but it was like, Hey, think about this. Like you have a great brand here. Do you really want that to be the face of it? And it was also when I was getting ready to publish that book. And I was like, I want my name on that book. I'm going to write a book. I don't want it to be anonymous. So I had all these like, excuse me, thoughts of like, Oh, maybe I should. And then you, so I talked to you and then I met you at an NBA. So national nurses and business association, all these nurse business owners go to this like conference and this, you know, talk about the unique struggles of being a nurse and having a business. And Mm -hmm. in that one of them talked about niches, like niching down. Cause right right now it was my blog and my audience was just nurses. Although I was talking to new nurses mostly, but I just kept my audience big. And then there it was like, the more you can narrow down your audience, the better you can serve them. Um, and so I was like, Oh, okay. I talked to new nurses. Maybe I should pivot my brand. And then I, that's when I pivoted to fresh RN. It's a great brand. Yes. I love that brand. Cause it also sounds like fresh right now, you know, (laughs) But uh, <laughs> like the Fresh Prince. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, um, so that's about like 2015, I think is when we did the full rebrand. And then that 2015 was a big year because that happened. And I got, that was when the whole Ebola thing happened. So I was training to be on the Ebola team at work. And then the nurse Nina thing where the nurse got Ebola and I was heated at how she got treated. So I was vocal about that online which turned into getting a little spot on Dr. Oz and on Buzzfeed and some other big publications. Cause I was like rocket ship. Boom. Yeah. And that year I got like nurse of the year from Charlotte business journal. And she's the ways Katie. You had like all the accomplishments out of a lifetime in one year in 2015. And I have that time. I was not I roll. Um, But that, and then I got the, great 100 nurses in North Carolina. It's this pretty big award that they do. Like they have a big gala every year. And the, you have, I have this like 15 page document that someone wrote this really long thing, like really long thing to like nominate me, Kim Kaiser. Thank you. Uh, She nominated me from my, from my hospital. And I was chosen out of hundreds of maybe even thousands of nurses to be me and one other person in our area or got that honor. It was really crazy. And I was pregnant that whole year or not that whole year, but most of that year for my, for my first child. Um, yeah. So that's that. And then that turned into, um, I got a book another deal. book deal. Yeah. I got, so that first one was, uh, independently published. published. How the many next... copies did you sell independently published? Do you know off the top of your head? Well, so I don't, I don't have an exact count because I had back then I did book baby and I did Amazon. And then I also sold PDFs on my website. And so, but now I just have it on Amazon. So Mm -hmm. compiling those numbers to consider the big sales at the beginning is very difficult. (laughs) The last time I checked was about 80,000 and checking is a pain in the butt. (laughs) It's not translating to audio, but like my jaw just hit the floor. (laughs) Um, As someone who has also published a couple of books, both self-publish and with a a publisher, like an official publisher, uh, that is a an insane quantity of books and an absolutely insane quantity of books. Like published authors who've been doing this for a while would be thrilled to sell that many books. 
um, was, especially nursing books and in, in, in that particular niche. So that's a huge amount. So if you want to publish a book, don't expect to sell 80,000, but that is a great goal to have. It was, I, and I think it speaks to the need, you know, there was definitely a big need. Um, and, but I've, I've, you know, I've, published more books since and no nowhere near that you know we published a book together you and i independently published the nurse's guide to blogging um that was what 2017 2018 or so Mm -hmm. um and then i got a book deal with the american nurses association like through this website i got connected with people and networking with these executives and things and then that turned into hey i know someone at the a a your book's amazing and then like gave my book to this like executive at the American Nurse Association who read it on her flight home from a conference and was like, can we publish something with you? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sure. We can do that. Cause you're, yeah. you know, it's funny. Um, I've got lots of other questions, but one of the thing I think is really funny is you were talking about, you know, you had this stark snarky name and you're funny, but like, I would never peg you as snarky, like snarky is like mean. It, it kind of comes off as like, not even callous, but like, ugh you know, like, like the eye roll literally were like, I don't care. And I, that I remember, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I remember when I reached out to you, I was like, it's clear that you care and your brand is saying otherwise. Yeah. And so I was so proud of you when you made a very difficult decision to own your image online, because back then the hospitals, you know, most Mm -hmm. of your peers didn't know what social media was. Uh, And then hospitals were deadly afraid of social media. Like Mm -hmm. people were making, either they were all or none. They were either not online at all because they were terrified or they were making a really big mistake. So that was a big uh, decision for you to make there. And so I hope you're really proud of that because I think it's made all the difference. Oh man, I can't imagine if I would have tried to stay anonymous and or tried to stay with that name. Like it did feel kind of a mismatch between like reality of what I'm doing and the name. And I felt like I was really proud of what I was saying and doing. Yes. Why should I hide behind it? So I, you know, looked it back at all the stuff I had and was like, yeah, this isn't anything I really need to be in. It's not like, and I also, even though I was anonymous, was still changing patient identifiers, you right. know? So it's not like, it's not like people could figure out who I was talking about. Um, so, so yeah, so that turned into, I mean, the, those book deals with the American Nurses Association. So I had to publish three books with them, including the second edition of Becoming Nursey. Um, which is, oh my gosh, double the content, way better. Um, It's called Anatomy of the Super Nurse. So those are through there. Um, But then that turned into course creation. 2018, I remember I asked one of my neuro ICU friends, hey, um, I really want to write a comprehensive blog post about neuro. And I remember she wrote it, I sent it to you. And you were like, Katie, this is a course. (laughs) And I was like, a course? Like I... Uh, there were very few online courses at that time and they were still very like high price point um, or just done nurses. by associations and uh, yes. they were very expensive. Yes. Yes. Or if they were done independently, they were like certification, like official, mm-hmm. like very official things. Um, so I showed that to you and you said that, like, check that out. So then I was like, oh, okay. I mean, that, that makes sense. So I took that blog post and turned it into the neuro nurse crash course. So I think that was published in like later 2018, I think, I'm not sure. And that sold really well. I was like, well, I know cardiac too. <laughs> what or, else do I know? What else do I know? Cause my experience was neuro. Who else do I know? Or, and yeah. And who else do I know? Right. One, well, what's the need there too? Cause I remember starting out on that cardiac med surge and it's like, I don't remember what pleurodesis is from nursing school. I don't remember what a pleural effusion is. I don't remember how to work a chest tube. I don't know any of that. I mean, when you start on a unit, you come in cold. Like the last time you learned about the specialty anatomy stuff was nursing school. And if you've been out of nursing school for like two years, like, I mean, well, even if you're a new grad, even if you're a new grad, the last time you had a cardiac lecture at least six months ago, and you were just trying to pass a test, like... You weren't having like clinicals where you're having five, six patients. Like, so cold, cold is a good term because not only do you start out cold, you're like, 
you know, you're, it's like you, your brain has forgotten everything because you basically just studied to pass the NCLEX, mm -hmm. but then anything you get that's specific to your specialty even, and let, let, you know, 10 years ago, to be clear, when you started, did you start from school in the neuro ICU? No, I, so I started uh, from 2010 to 2012. I was on this cardiac med surge unit. Then okay. I moved. Then we went to neuro okay. and I went to neuro ICU, ICU for four years. And then when I moved back home or where I was from, I went back to that same unit for a year while I was doing my master's. So even to, like you went to a specialty technically right out of school, which was kind of our generation is really the first group of nurses who did that. Mm -hmm. Like almost everyone went to med search and like even the old folks, even mm -hmm. people in, my, in our generation will still say, you should spend two years on med search mm -hmm. or at least three, two or three years on med search. So even going from that cardiac to the other, you kind of went feet first into specialties just out of nursing school and really no one is preparing you for that. And so you start out cold. And I always think it's interesting that all of the content around these subspecialties, especially um, is very cold. I'm like, yeah. it's very academic and by the book and here's this. And it's nothing about like how to exist as a human being, because apparently we're all robots. Cause they're, I mean, AI is coming to take, take they're your job. Take our, yeah. Robots Virtu are good taking over nursing. I'm sure there are virtual nurses. Have you seen that? Or like they remotely monitor you. There's like a camera in your bed and it's looking at Paul Paul, making sure he's <laughs> opening his eyes every 30 minutes. This is not a joke. This I believe not... it. And it's going to confuse Paul Paul even more. <laughs> it's right? a human being. But <laughs> the, but the thing is, is all those courses are, they're very cold and they're, they're wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I think all of the ones that are produced for certification prep and whatnot, they are exactly what they're for, but there was nothing that treated the the human side and your book did that so well and your courses all of them really do a good job of like like holding your hand you're like you know the preceptor every nurse wish they had because you're so kind and compassionate um in the way you you do your your courses and that's really different um so can you give us a little insight into you know why you made the decision to go so differently you know everyone else is selling there's a lot of nurses at least today that are selling some sort of certification prep or like NCLEX prep sort of program like the Remar review is the one I can think of off the top of my head you know nursing.com John started his stuff selling an NCLEX prep like that's that's a business model that a lot of people can do but you're doing something really different so what gave you that perspective that you wanted to do um, sort of the softer side um, of, of nursing education? Well, I saw an experience for myself, like book knowledge doesn't translate. And it's only a piece of the puzzle. And we're, we're giving them a piece of the puzzle like six months ago at minimum and expecting them to know where to put it. And it's, and you, and I, you don't realize the gravity, I think of this and the pressure until you're through it, where it's like, oh, not only do you need to have this clinical technical knowledge, but then you also have to talk to Mima when she's sobbing, who had her surgery canceled today. And she's looking to you for support. And you've got three other patients on the call. I, like, literally, how do you do that? Like no one was there to, and I was, I had wonderful preceptors. It was still incredibly challenging. And I put my foot in my mouth so many times that first year because I said the wrong thing. And I'm also trying to figure out the clinical side of things. And it's like, wow, like we're, we're not getting what we need. And if somebody oh, yeah. would have just told me, don't say this, <laughs> say this, um, or if somebody would have said, instead of like, um, here's this 10 page explanation of what a subdural hematoma is and all the, every little thing that could ever happen to it ever versus that's when you get blood on top of your brain, yeah. it can kill you. Here's, it's not a stroke. Here are, the, here are the three things you might want to avoid and probably don't say yes. this. Well, and, and in these very specific situations, it's like, like when I, when I got to neural ICU, there's only a small amount of like neurological injuries that will put someone in a neuro ICU, right? Like um, slow burn dementia and slow burn Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. Those aren't going to put you in a neuro ICU. Why do I need to spend forever learning about that? Now, while my patient may have that, that's not going to be their chief complaint. It's going to be a stroke. It's going to be some big old tumor, hydrocephalus, something, I don't know, something. 
So why am I learning about all this other stuff that's not moving the needle for me? And I wanted to focus on things that would move the needle for people during a really vulnerable period of time, which is when you're starting in this new role, when you're carrying this new responsibility, um, especially if you've never done it before. Uh, I, I wanted to be conscientious of like uh, information overload because it's not like our brains have this like capacity to like retain everything. They don't, but we, but for some reason, education is like, like geared, like here, here's a nursing textbook because I gave it to you. Now, you know, all that information, right? Like, no, that's not how learning happens. And to expect that from people, especially a lot of nurses are overachievers. Then they get all this shame that they don't, they're not performing like they should be. And now someone's life is on the line. It's just this really um, intense pressure. And I wanted to be able to speak to that, like dive into that. And I did notice there's a lot of NCLEX prep. There's a lot of certification prep, but where we need it the most is all right, I passed the NCLEX. Now I'm in my specialty, even if that specialty is med surge or general ICU. Good luck. Yeah. It's like, good luck. <laughs> good luck synthesizing all of these, like over the last four years, you learned all these pieces of information and now you need to synthesize that. And while you've got somebody breathing down your neck, like grilling you on questions and it's like, I haven't, I took pharmacology two years ago. Like, I don't, I don't remember norepinephrine, leave a, or, you know, neocinet. I don't remember those titrations and what it does mechanically or, or, uh, yeah. and back then you had to, you had to open a big tabers. There wasn't like an app, like, I don't even think we had iPhones or if we did, it was very early. Yeah, it was very or, early. I think they had just come out, but so you, you didn't had to have be balling to, yeah. have, to have that. And there were no apps. It was whatever came on the phone. So and you better not take your phone out at work back then. Back <sighs> uh, then, yeah. nobody do that. And that was a big deal if you took your phone out. Uh, yeah. So I noticed the need that, and I noticed that everyone was faking it till they made it. And uh, yeah. that was not safe. And we didn't create this psychologically safe place to ask questions. We just pretended like we knew things and improvised at the expense of patients. And I hated that. Like, and sometimes you're you're on a unit where you you can't ask questions mm -hmm. um, because you're looked at as um, stupid. Like a lot of new nurses already feel stupid yes. automatically because they all that knowledge left their brain. Because mm -hmm. again, you're kind of just pumped up to take the NCLEX. And then you're told how great you are because you graduated nursing school and you passed the NCLEX and you beat all the odds. Like how many mm -hmm. people don't get into nursing school? How many, yep. how many of you, how many people in nursing school, like we're told like within the week, like look to your left, look to the right, you know, at least one of you won't be here yep. and you, and you're the, you're one of the ones who made it like in my you're nursing elite. school, I think only 50% of us got through. Um, and then the pass rate of the NCLEX was pretty high after that, but they eliminated so many to keep their NCLEX pass rates up. Let's, let's just, let's just be clear here. The reason they eliminate so many people in nursing school, if you've never heard this before, mm -hmm. is because the schools are penalized if their NCLEX pass rates are lower. And if they lose accreditation, they lose funding and they want, they want your money, right? Like they want money. So it's they are gladly willing to take more people than they know will pass, because they'll get all that money. Um, and not to say that they're being nefarious and it. it's just, that's how business works. Mm -hmm. So it's, to me, it's less about like, you were the exceptional one. You were the person who could pass the test, but it doesn't, but being a nurse on the floor is so different. And I think you do a good job with your courses of putting into like reality, like what it means to be a human being on nurse, especially when you're like a baby. Most of us, go through nursing school, right out of school, we come out, what, we're 22, maybe? The, yeah. I mean, there's the younger ones are 22 years old. You consider COVID stuff. A lot of them didn't have clinic, like real, real clinical experience. Oh gosh, can and you imagine? I can't, I can't imagine because the social aspect of providing nursing care is also very challenging. You, you read about all these, uh, medical like things and textbooks and how this patient has this and this and this and is, oh my God, this patient, this patient, this patient, I have to do everything perfect. And then you get to clinical it's like, there they are. That's the patient. Oh my God. I don't know what to talk. Yeah. I don't know how to talk to them. Oh my God. They're, the, they're the like a celebrity. With... Exactly. Yeah. And, and they're going through a tough time and it's just a human, another human. And they got all these expectations and they're all over a lot of them overachievers. Cause right. We get those, the people who pass, who people who get through nursing school and who pass the NCLEX, those are the, like those elite people that could get through it. 
that were that have these very high expectations for themselves and i'm not saying that that's a bad thing but you know it kind of creates this um self-defeating process where we you know you put them in this very challenging environment and they're not given the tools that they need or crushed. realistic stuff and they're crushed they can't handle yeah. it and then they email me like i'm about to quit i don't know what to right. do I, I feel like the biggest like failure in the you world can't, you really can't tell anybody i mean right. I, thank god for strangers on the internet because are you going to tell your boss that you that you don't know what you're doing? Yeah, well, are you going to tell your preceptor? Do. Well, yeah. I mean, a, a, a good on them if they have the confidence to do that. But I would have never. I would, you know, I remember just you cry in the car at the end of the shift, going, "What? Uh, this I've isn't what I thought I was going to so be." Stupid. Yeah, I like, thought I did all the right things so that I wouldn't feel like this, and yeah. now I do. I don't have a way to cope with it. I still have to perform. I don't know who to tell, and I, I need spend to all this money like in know. school. Yes. And then a lot of them are getting hazed by like not oh, cool God. nurses. And it's almost Present. like, yeah, it's like, not let's, let's haze him. this person into yeah. competency for some reason to validate how the hazing I experienced. Now that doesn't happen everywhere by any means. I did not get hazed and I did not see people get hazed, but it does happen. I've heard things, you know, not so great stories. And I know you've experienced it and it's like, no wonder people are leaving. Like we've had their expectations all the way up here that this is when you have RN behind your name. Our nurses know how to do this. Good nurses do this. Good nurses do this. And then you get there with RN behind your name and you're like, I don't know how to do that. I'm terrified. I don't want to make a mistake, number one, to hit the, hurt the patient or to have the mean nurse down the hall who thinks I'm an, a total idiot I don't, and that I have to give report to. Like, I don't want to deal with that shame and embarrassment. Like, it's just, it can become crushing. And I, and I think Accurate. that, like, you have, like, so it is my passion to support nurses experiencing that. It's not just brand new nurses. It's nurses who left the bedside for five years. They want to go have some babies. Now those babies are in school and they're like, hey, let me get back into it. And then they feel like a new grad again. And then they're scared. Right. And, you know, like, or whatever. Or that transition that into a new specialty. Yes. So I, I, I wanted to give people permission to be beginners and like, honestly ask questions, um, and be able to, and because I've been through it, I'm like, what were the questions I had? Like, I remember being new on med surge. Okay. How do I go through my day? I remember having multiple shifts where, okay, let me try assessing everybody first and then doing all the meds first. Okay. Wait, no, that didn't work. Now I need to, maybe I, maybe I do it all at the same time, but now it's taking too long. And how do I, you know, and like trying yeah. to figure that out. It's like, why is this not school? So why, why am I figuring this out on the fly and being late with things when somebody could just be like, actually it is the most efficient to do it this way. So yeah just do that. And it's, this is the most efficient way to work through your patients. It's, it's, I felt like nursing school was like this massive recipe book that explained every single ingredient to any recipe you could ever imagine. But there was no point at no point was there like a full recipe from start to finish of actually how to get through a shift taking care but nobody ever cooked the meal, right? Like nobody cooked like, the meal. In theory, this is how this meal should be cooked. Exactly. And here's, I'm going to tell you everything there is to know about salt and about sugar and about bread. And it's like, I don't care that bread was invented and blah, blah, blah. And how do I cut a slice? <laughs> how, do, how do I? In the toast? history of the manufacturing of the flour. Exactly. <laughs> Which is which is what it feels which is what it felt like. I feel like I got all these ingredients that I kind of knew a little bit about, but actually putting them together to make a meal, that big piece of it wasn't there. And to also have somebody caring that I did well um and did it right, you know, wasn't there. And I, I wanted to be able to create that, especially because there I mean, I had great preceptors, but there's a lot of people out there who have terrible preceptors who really, really feel like they're doing it completely alone. Yeah. Terrifying. Yeah. I had but. decent preceptors, but I definitely had the experience of, uh, once I didn't have my preceptor, I was alone. Literally one day uh, I was in the break room mm -hmm. and I went to lunch first, which was a rare treat. And all the nurses came in like one by one to sit. There were two tables, four chairs at each table. 
and I was probably six months out of nursing school and the nurses all came in and they all started to sit at the table on the other side. I'm like, okay, I know these, they, um, I'm not the well-liked amongst this crew. Like it was very clear. They all sat there, the four chairs got full and then they took a chair from my table and put the fifth chair like at the four top table. And I was like, oh my God, I really am alone. They absolutely all hate me. They won't even sit at the table for 15 minutes to scarf down like leftovers. So I get, you know, the nurse who doesn't have anyone. And especially if you feel overwhelmed, you've probably already talked to the, all the nurses in your life until you're blue in the face where they don't, they don't want to hear it anymore. Right. Like yeah, um, you need something, you need somebody. So you do. And your experience too on that unit is so um, unique too. And you know what I also encourage people to do too is, you know, you want to be friendly with your coworkers, but mm -hmm. I don't encourage people to become BFFs with their coworkers because there's a, well, that may happen. And that's, I'm not saying that sh that's like wrong if it happens, but I've seen a lot of times it. over, don't expect it. And over time or not over time, over the years, I have observed there are a lot of nurses who will pretend like they're your best friend. And they don't actually care what you, what's going on in your personal life. They're just curious and yeah. they want to have something to talk about with somebody else. And so I, I like the whole, like, be friendly, but don't be like sharing your life story with these brand new nurses who don't know you from Adam, don't know you from Eve. Like, yes. I, I think, especially about your relationships and your sex life. I hear all too often that people, and I know people who've got suspended for doing stuff like that because the person they thought was their friend mm -hmm was turned them in because they shared a dirty text message and they thought that they were just doing girl chat, but it was at, at work, you know? Yeah. I mean, that kind of like, it it's, is you want to have your own back and like, and I think that goes into something like that Kelsey at Holden Life, Life Nurse talks about is those boundaries that are necessary. Like we were, we're so desperate to have connection with somebody else at work because it's so scary and we find a friendly face and then we overshare which now that person might not be like manipulative and take that information and share with other people, but oversharing at work is not a great thing. There's right. still a professional environment and hopefully you have other people in your life you can overshare with that are not work colleagues because that can really, really muddy the water. I, I'm, it's interesting. And I'm glad you mentioned Kelsey, because that brings about, you know, one of the other questions I had, um, you, you can't operate, no nurse works as, as on, an, on an island. Um, even if you feel really alone at work, those people are going to help you change your patient's bed because you're not going to want the patient to suffer. But if you're not having that emotional connection with people who are in the place you are and trying to accomplish the goals, it's really struggling. Um, and so I know that you, I, and Kelsey have really formed a tight bond because we're all doing something similar. We're nurses online. We have a, at least somewhat of a social media presence, although it's a little different today than it was. We build an email list. We have a business and we collaborate and connect all the time. And there's a, an inherent trust there. I think it's important that other people have that community. Um, I know you launched your VIP community um, to sort of meet that need for people who didn't have it at work or who wanted a greater connection that wasn't Facebook, you know, that wasn't, yes. you know, the armchair quarterbacks or whatever they call mm -hmm. them, where mm -hmm. there's all the hateful and you know, political commentary. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and why you thought that was important to have this private space for nurses? Yeah, I felt like, you know, online, you have people who are like, well, just do this. Well, that was stupid. Why did you do that? Like, uh, you know, and it feels very like, oh, I was just trying to get some help. I was just trying to get some like perspective. And now I've got, especially if the post gets viral or gets shared a whole bunch. It's like you want different perspectives, but you also need people to be like human, <laughs> like acting like you're talking to another human and not just this, you know, anonymous person online. Um, and I felt like also, you know, Facebook can really um, blur the boundaries, I think, with your professional oh, yeah. life and your personal life. And if you're uh, and, you know, people's bosses will friend them and oh, but here's the door to my personal life. You know, I think that the way that it evolved is, uh, yeah, like getting those friend requests from people at work. Or, or people in leadership or people or patients. Felt validating at the time. But yeah, it feels, oh, they want to be my friend, but really, they probably just want to see what you post, you know? 
Yeah, especially the friends of the friends thing. Um, and also for all you 22 year olds out there, um, we know Facebook is for dinosaurs, you know. Um, so Roar. we're talking. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was it was the only thing we had back Literally. in the day. Um, so we're talking about TikTok. I don't know if you're on the Twitter or any anywhere, even LinkedIn, being really careful about what um who you're connecting with and who who sees what. Um and where you ask those questions, um, you you don't want to, you certainly don't want to put PHI out there. We all want to um, uh, respect HIPAA, but you also you have to be mindful of where you're vulnerable because even if you're not asking a question that's inappropriate, it, it could still get your feelings hurt um, if you ask in a place where people aren't kind. So I'm really glad that you created that. Um, a lot of people who follow you for a while probably know that you have this podcast. This is a free resource. You have uh, how many episodes are you up to at this point with your podcast? This one or the next one might be 100. I'm That's right. amazing. Yeah. Right? Like the 10 year, 100 anniversary, All the right. podcast anniversary at the same time. Boo-hoo. Yeah, I can't remember. I'm in the high 90s, but, and I've started doing little ones called Partial Dose. So little, it, like a, just a little, I like, Hey, the nurse I, references. I, know, I, know, I, I like that it. you have, if you buy all your courses, it's called the full dose. Yep. I'm appreciative <laughs> that you didn't use nurse dose because that's like a dirty word. That's it where you like word. give them more than they should have. So yes. we're not, we're not condoning that behavior, but the full and the appropriate, appropriate dose. The appropriate dose. Yes. Of, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, th- yeah, this, I started the podcast. I think I like, we recorded it in like 2016. I recorded mm. like a whole season with another nurse and then we released it in January of 2017 and we're hitting like around a hundred episodes, which has been, I've had seasons where I took some time off of it and then would record, do bulk recording and everything. But yeah, I've had, this is a free resource. I have my blog that has like 400 blog posts. I also have free mini courses that I felt like, you know, sometimes you need a little bit more than what could be in a blog post and you don't want it to be overwhelming. So I, I have a few of those. I have one called ICU drips for beginners that I, ha, keeping that in your mind that, that like someone has to start every somewhere. And I felt like when we got into ICU, people start talking about drips and titrations and um, the bags and the pumps and the secondary primer. And they talk about it like, but wait, what is it? What does it mean to titrate? What, when it's someone like- says a drip, like, what is, what do you really mean? So I explain I see you drips like you have never <laughs> heard any of these words before. Um, like, so that one, that's one of, that's our, our most popular free one. And then I have, I just released one called nursing report for ba- basics for med surge nurses. So you hear about report, right. And you try to give a good report, but report isn't just giving a good report. It's receiving report or preparing to receive report, receiving report, and then preparing to give report and then giving report. And then also what to do when you're dealing with a rude nurse. So I made like these different modules to like help, help nurses new to like the med surge kind of level of care, um, do better with that. I think we have, we have a couple more. I'm trying to think what my other free ones are. I have the coping through COVID, which is the one for people going that it's just like kind of like emotional support. Um, I interviewed my husband who's a therapist. Yeah. That's Um, so good. Yeah. And it was sponsored by his, his counseling agency is a great perspectives from him completely free. Um, and then what's my third, I have another three, another free course. You can get a chapter of becoming nursey for free. Yeah. You got, I mean, you've got so many free, I mean, free offers that you can download all these checklists. I think you give away resume templates. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, what's the, the 10 interview questions one? you just made that one not too long ago, like the 10 most common interview questions. Yeah. I updated my, so I, I, one of my courses from like five years ago, maybe was my nursing interviews and resumes because I saw people walking into interviews, acting a fool. (laughs) <laughs> but they didn't know they were acting a fool. It was very subtle, but it was just like, oh my god, because they're babies. They're babies. They don't, yeah. yeah. They or or they're just like so green that it's yeah. like, and they're also kind of. I've noticed just generationally, you know, we have become, and I don't Casual. think this is a bad thing, but just oversharing. Yeah, and those professional bound it's it's like having that like okay i need to be the most professional version of myself. I'm not an open book to just say everything at any time, which I felt like. I was going to mention this a little bit with social media is like each of those is a tool to, for a purpose. So Facebook isn't where you share your whole life. TikTok's not where you share your whole life. Like your whole life is your personal thing. Please don't use this, the internet to just 
tell everybody how you do everything. <laughs> Like, yeah. because other people will watch it and make base judgments upon you because of them. Right. Like, yeah. so I think you use those things effective, like appropriately. And the same thing with a job interview, you are not an open book, yeah. job interview. And, but a lot of people put want, your best foot forward. Yeah. No. And the best not version both of yourself. at the same time. Yeah. But it's interesting how people will go into job interviews, just not prepared at all and just speak off the cuff. And just share way too much. Yes. Well, and it's it's actually a really good practice to even to rehearse the common because they all for nurses especially especially now when it's there's such a a high need. I mean, it's it's probably pretty difficult not to get a job at this point. Um, but the right job really the takes right having job. the right job really takes having the skill to answer the questions. And they're the ones that you have in that you download. Um, are the most common ones. And if you know how to answer those, if you have at least your bullet points and you've, if not rehearsed it, you've at least made an attempt to kind of think through what you would say, you won't look like a deer in the headlight and they'll know that you have some critical thinking ability. So, yeah, which is what they're trying to assess. So I have that download where it's like, here's the top 10 most common ones. And then I made a, an editable a PDF where you can just type in your answers. Oh yeah. So that you can like, okay, this is, or, or I also have one where it's just like a, a PDF with space. So if you, if you're, prefer to handwrite and print. Um, you can do that too, but it's just to help you like have an idea. And then if you want to upgrade to like, okay, here's how I go about answering them. And here's actually what they're trying to assess, assess by asking that question. That's in that upgraded version of the course, because I realized that's where the, the need is like, that's where the, the need really is. And while resume writing is challenging and I go over that for sure, the, the biggest need is that getting in those interviews and asking, answering those questions, but in an authentic way, not in a, here's what you say. You need to create your own answer. If you want to get the good jobs, like, yeah, you can get a good job, but do you want to get a job you're going to stay at and you can build yeah. up, you know, like work there for a long time and have it be sustainable. Like those are competitive. You can work on any old unit probably right yeah. now, but if you want a good job, <laughs> but you have got to be a high performer. Exactly. Um, we had ta I, we talked about almost all of your like free things that you do. Um, I think the only ones we maybe hadn't mentioned was like you're on TikTok. You've got some great content oh, yeah. there. YouTube though is probably one of the favorites the, mm -hmm. of, that of people in in your community. Um, you have a ton of videos there. You've started doing YouTube shorts. Um, we already talked about the podcast and all the articles and on the website. You can find out those freshrn.com. Obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess if you're new, not obviously. Um, so you do all those things for free and I really love that because you give back probably 80% of what you produce is just free content for the world. Uh, and you produce better quality than a lot of people who are selling things, but you do have some stuff for sale and it's really good. It's high quality. Um, and you put a lot of effort into it. I always am oppressed, you know, when you produce something and two years later, you're not happy with it. Like you redo it again. Cause you want to make sure it's continuing to be high quality and you, and you typically give people who purchased it two years ago, the new version. So you're always producing quality and those courses and your course bundles right now, you're doing something really special for your 10 year anniversary. So all that high quality stuff that if they want to, you know, buy one of your courses right now, you're giving 30% off, right? Yeah. For just I the week of the 10 year anniversary. Yes. So one of the things that I've has been important to me is like appropriate pricing on courses. So I try to, I, cor I price them as low as I can for the amount of content that's in them and how much it costs to create them. And as I have earned more money through them, I have been able to sew that money back into the business and, and up my production quality, because I think that's what people deserve. But that, that, I mean, you know, my bigger courses are a couple hundred bucks, you know, that's not cheap, but it's also like the cheapest I can make that course to make it feasible for me to continue to making, making them. So we don't offer discounts. We like never offer discounts. So to celebrate 10 years, I was unless like, you're in, unless you're in VIP, you get a discount every day. Mm -hmm. If you are <laughs> a VIP yet. Yeah. So we, that's what we, that's my thing has been, if you're a, a VIP, then you can, the, you, part of your membership is a 40% discount whenever you want. But outside of that, outside this 30% that, is like, it's been years since you've given yes, a discount, I believe. It has been, it has been years since we've done discounts. So I thought let's celebrate 10 years, you know, knock 30% off. And, and we, all, we also have created a bunch of different bundle options too. Like you mentioned the full dose, which is literally every course that I have. 
but that's I also, the best value because you get a discount because it's bundled and then you get this discount on top of it. Yes. So it's like all of the courses, all of them for like eight, 15, I think. Um, and that's, that's like, insanely good. There are people selling courses online today for thousands of dollars that oh, aren't yeah. anywhere near the quality or, or volume of, of yeah. what you've got in there. Hundreds of videos, mm-hmm. the audio for all your content is there. I think every course has audio Um, because people like to listen to that on podcasts and then there's some text versions for for everything so you get three formats for basically whatever type of learner you are yeah I tried to do that because I prefer to listen and then write so I I have text and then I have um, most modules that have text I also you know record like a podcast and then you can also listen to it without using as much data Um, so so yeah so those I have multiple bu- bundles which is like the new nurse masterclass and the ICU course or neurowise and the masterclass or try to make all of the appropriate bundles and then you know if you there's one that you want that's not there you can email me I'll make a bundle for you um I've done that over the over the years that's how we've gotten to the list that we have is cuz people will say hey I want these couple of courses together can you bundle them sure um yeah go ahead uh, well, I was just going to say, so also like you're sending out constantly new information. So like, make sure you get on your email list. If you're not, you can go to the bottom of the website, fresherin.com, scroll down and fill out because anytime you produce something new, free content, a new course, you do offer a slight discount on your courses. Like the first week they're released, like when they're mm-hmm. net new, but that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also any of your new blogs that go out, new videos that go up, people really need to make sure that they're getting that email. So that's a big deal. Um, yeah, I have. And, and when you sign my up for my email list, that is also another place for free content because I send out uh, a weekly uh, email called my weekly pearls. So it's kind of, you know, some of my writing and my tips and uh, ways to work through being a student and like some of them are student directed, some of them are new graduate related and some are just general, but you get a little email every week of just you know, some tidbits, some points of enlightenment, I think it would like to call them. Um, so that's another piece of, you know, free content directly to your inbox. And that's just at freshrun.com. I think right there, you can just pop your email in and get on the list. And that that is how you stay up to date on all my stuff. Like, you know, so you don't miss like a sale like this or a new, new piece of content that comes out. Yeah, definitely recommend it. I feel like we, um, we need to have like the Brittany and Katie podcast because we certainly like, we could go for hours on this stuff um, but I want to keep this I think we've I think we're about 40 minutes right now um, so I want to go ahead and start wrapping some things up and maybe ask one final question this is actually one I just thought of because I think it's important you've gone 10 years at this um, you've done amazing things and let's be really clear like I've been doing this for 10 years and I haven't accomplished quite what Katie has in the way that she has she's you're definitely um you've got a special secret sauce um you're incredibly authentic and kind and compassionate and you produce high quality and there's a lot of people who do this who don't have all of those things in there together. I think that's significant. I think that's why you've been so successful. I think that's why people really love your podcast is because you're you're that same person wherever you are. Um, and the last 10 years have been so impressive. I'm curious what you expect or plan or you want to see happen over the next 10 years. Oh, good question. Well, no, so like you mentioned before, like quality is really important to me. And I I have exhausted my uh, clinical expertise in terms of like specialties. Like I've never worked pediatrics. I've never worked the emergency department. So creating a course from like those is not something that I could do like from my own experience. So what's been important to me is ensuring that the content that I do have is like top notch. So my goal over the next 10 years is to really refine and make sure that I am fully serving my audience from those perspectives. And so the content that I do have, you know, I'm continually looking up and researching and what are the new best practices. And, you know, my critical thinking course is one of my favorite ones because I love thinking about thinking and (laughs) (laughs) learning. And there's just, it it gets so deep and it's so interesting and it's so applicable to the bedside. Um, And so just learning more about those things and implementing those. And like you mentioned before, if you ever buy a course and I update it, but you get free access to the update. Like I had my, my neuro course has doubled, maybe even tripled in length, but the people who bought it originally, like I just sent them an email, Hey, it's updated. You get 
more contact hours and more whatever because you bought it and I don't I just ethically don't think it's right for me to charge people I think more (laughs) um more for an upgrade of the content that they already purchased so I think that's just a consistent with my values kind of thing um and I think what's been what really dictates what I say what what I'll do is is it mission focused like our mission right or, oh, you have one, right? That's unique. Most people who have the type of presence that you have, you can go to your website and I think it's on the about page yeah. where it talks about your mission and values. Yeah. It was important to me to really define that because I think when you're more mission focused, you move the needle more for your audience. Cause this isn't like this platform is not about me. It's not a place for me to feel validated. It's a place to validate other people and their experience and the and so like i could do things where i get like scrub contracts and you know amazon home stuff and do all these you know things that would make me feel good and get me products i like but then it's not about like this the whole purpose of this isn't to help me feel better about myself or make my life easier it's to serve nurses who are having that challenging transition that i had and ultimately to enable them to provide pay- better patient care um and in a way where they can engage with their profession in a sustainable way and not burn out in two years. So when I'm looking at what am I going to do next or what are my priorities, I ask, is this mission focused? Is this, is this really going to help new nurses or just nurses thrive and um, move the needle for them? And so that's kind of how I determine what to do. So, and right now the best place for my, uh, uh, focus is to really refine the content that I've been making. Cause I've been doing it for 10 years. And some of the stuff I wrote in 2013, that's still on my website. I'm like, I need to update that. So I'm in that process of really overhauling everything, really upgrading everything so that what I have out there is the absolute highest quality and not just, um, you know, the best I could do at the time I did that, but now I can do better and I want to make sure I'm doing better. So that's what I think the next 10 years are going to look like. So speaking of what's next um, and, you know, making sure you're, you're providing good value. I want to give, make sure that we've told people what the dates of the sale are going to be, because this podcast, the the rest of it's evergreen, but this particular thing is, is just for this week. Mm-hmm. So it started on uh, Sunday, the 23rd, April 23rd, 2023. It's going to run through Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. It's Saturday, the 29th. Yes. And you have to use the promo code 10 years. The number you can 10. go to courses.freshrn.com. It'll show you on the top of everywhere you go. You know, we're not trying to hide this sale. Mm-hmm. Um, you will see that the sale is on. Um, so make sure you go out and get that today because unless you join VIP, which we highly recommend, mm-hmm. um, this is the only time you're going to be able to get a deal as good as this. Um, and so you'll always be able to get Katie's wonderful free content, but take advantage of this opportunity to um, see what's refreshingly different about the Fresh RN take on nursing education. Um, it has been such a pleasure to meet with you today, Katie. I mean, I'm, I'm asking, like, I'm acting like we don't like meet every week um, <laughs> to talk about like the technical stuff on how things work, which by the way, I help Katie with the technical stuff in the back end. So if there's a, ever anything broken on the website, it's my fault. So you can, like, <laughs> yeah, you y'all, Brittany's <laughs> into informatics. I am not, I am the writer. <laughs> I am the creative person and Brittany gets it done and is the only reason that my website is functional. Let me tell you, because it it it's up to me, it wouldn't happen. If it's broken, it's also me. So um, <laughs> any, anywho, um, this has been so much fun. I'm so proud of you. I'm so thankful that the one time in my life that giving unsolicited advice to a stranger resulted in our wonderful friendship panned out. I would do it all over again and I'll continue to do it to other strangers if I feel <laughs> it will result the same, because it certainly <laughs> been um a lot of fun to know you and it, i'm like i feel like a proud dad or, or whatever <laughs> or a proud mom i guess watching you like every time you get like you know another book published or another course that goes live it's been fun to not only be a part of the journey and help you with some things but also just watch you succeed so i'm very proud of you i'm i'm sure your mom and dad are like thrilled but you know and i know a lot of the people in your community are are really excited to see the things that you do so Speaking on behalf of all of us, we can't see what happens next with Fresh RN. And thank you so much for providing such high quality 
education content, understanding and, you know, authenticity to the nursing world at large. Oh, Brittany, I don't even, I, thank you. I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're amazing. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. See you guys later. Be, be sure to stay tuned. FreshRN.com for all your FreshRN needs. And of course, courses.freshrn.com. If you want to go directly to all the courses again, 10 years, the number 10, one zero years is the code for 30% off. And that is just in, you know, the week of uh, April 23rd uh, for that one week for that discount. But all the other stuff is good at all times. So this podcast is still valid and all the other content is still valid. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again sometime.